powerful actions to tackle the changing nature of crime, such as knife crime, which will help to prevent young people from being drawn into crime in the first place, helping to build a safer and more caring society. And it's a fact that police forces, run by a conservative police and crime commissioner, <coughs> perform better across all measures. 84.2% of conservative controlled areas are rated as good or outstanding, compared to just 68.75% of labour controlled areas. 27.8% of labour areas have been classed as requiring improvement. We all support this motion. We all know how our local neighbourhood police forces have been decimated over the last few years. We won't stand here and say anything different. But while we're writing to the government, I suggest that members office, op op opposite also use their lobbying power and use their energies to contact <coughs> Andy Burnham, Labour Greater Manchester Mayor and Police and Crime Commissioner, to support our police forces locally, using fully the powers he's been given and the abilities and flexibility to raise additional sources locally, rather than keep kicking this round as a political football, as we seem to be doing. Let's come together and let's work together and do what we're here to do for our public. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Morgan, I hope that was just a slip of the tongue. Otherwise, can you have a look at 27B? Okay. Madam Mayor, I do apologise. I do apologise. Councillor Peel. We're, we're all sat here, over here perplexed at what's going on with the party opposite. It started off quite well with Councillor Wilde and then just quickly went downhill and degenerated into the most bizarre display of the Conservative opposition I've ever seen. I mean, there's genuine confusion here as to whether you're supporting this motion or not because you really don't want to support it. You really do not want to support this motion. Councillor Toby made it clear, Zoe Kirkpatrick made it clear, Councillor Muslim, sorry, um, Hewitt, and Councillor Morgan, you all made it absolutely clear you do not want to support this motion. You do not want to support this motion. You really don't. You've got yourself in a bit of a trap here. Um, let, let's start off, Councillor. The only thing I had, the only problem I had with Councillor Wilde was he then start, he, he went on to start to say, but it's not just about funding, it's also about staffing turnovers. You have to understand, Councillor Wild, that the reason you get these staffing turnovers in the police is because of job insecurity. That is a fundamental problem with the policing. At all levels, job insecurity uh, partly comes from uh, stress on the job and, und and overworked and not enough uh, colleagues and, and uh, no cover for when PCSOs are off. Um, Councillor uh, Muslin um, talked about um, singing the praises of home watch schemes. Well, I don't think you were on the council, were you, last February? So have a word with your colleagues and ask them why they voted against this council funding 100,000 into home watch schemes in Bolton, which they did. So you have a word with them about that. Um, it's everyone else's fault but the government. That's the other theme. Cuts to council services, well, you know, the hundred and odd million that we've lost in Bolton, that's Linda's fault. It's Linda's fault, that. The cuts to the police service in Greater Manchester, that's Andy Burnham's fault. The cuts to the schools in Bolton that you all supported last council, that's the head teacher's fault, isn't it? The cuts to the NHS, the cuts to the hospitals, that's the consultant's fault, isn't it? It's everybody else's fault but your own. Now, statistics, somebody's mentioned, the manipulation of statistics from Councillor Zoe Kurt Roberts and Councillor Muslim in particular was astounding. Crime is going up. Just to understand this, crime is going up. Funding for the police has fallen. That has led to fewer police officers. That has led to a rise in crime. It's not rocket science. If we accept what Councillor Allen and others are saying, why do we need police officers? So the number of police officers does not affect crime. That's what you're seriously arguing here. Just listen to yourselves. Why do we need police officers? Okay. So you're, so you're agreeing with me, Councillor Allen? We, there is a direct correlation. Listen to me. There is a direct color, correlation between the number of police officers and crime. Now... 
let me conclude. You ask anybody in positions of leadership within, within the police force, it's only last year that the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester said that the police in Greater Manchester was at critical levels. Critical levels, this is the Chief Constable, not some elected politician, this is the Chief Constable. Now, I was originally gonna stand just to make one point, but I do need to make this point. On behalf of my ancestor, uh, Sir, <laughs> Sir Robert Peel, um, I represent the family when I say uh, he would be appalled at what Theresa May and David Cameron have done to the police in this country. As has been pointed out, even Maggie Thatcher wouldn't do that. Previous Tory governments used to carry this mantle of the party of law and order quite proudly. You beat us in every opinion poll on who's the party to trust the law and order. From what we've seen tonight, you guys are in a bit of a problem in terms of holding that mantle up proudly because you are really letting down your constituents with some of the things that you are saying. We have seen utter, just completely and utterly politically motivated speeches directed, <laughs> directed at this Labour group, at this Labour group, because you are completely in denial as to what the problem is. Now, as I started off, Councillor Peel, can you, can you, you sum up, Madam please? Yeah. As I started off, you know, listen, listen, you don't want to support the motion, but you're going to support it reluctantly. As far as I'm concerned, don't support it. We don't need your support. We don't need your support. We'll take the sensible parties. Take the sensible parties over here. Please follow your conscience. Do whatever you feel your conscience is telling you. Thank you. Councillor Cunningham. Thank you. Um, there's been so much said tonight that it probably a lot of it cuts out things I was going to say, but I'll just perhaps make some points. The, it's not all about uh, police uh, figures being recorded, as, as was mentioned over here. It's about getting an actual response, as has been already alluded to. People need that human touch. I think whilst I wholeheartedly support this motion, we need the funding, uh, extra funding for the police. I think we also need to ask the Mayor when he's asking for that, to also um, look at funding for other agencies. Because another real problem that the police face is that they are doing the jobs of lots of other agencies and the, the diversity of tasks that are now placed on them. You know, if you speak to some of the local police officers in Bolton, perhaps as I have, they will tell you they spend an inordinate amount of time trying to find children absconding from institutions. There's not enough social workers, there's not enough uh, people to do the, 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 the jobs that then fall to the police. They, they have also to look at priorities, and the mayor needs perhaps again to, 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 to push this bit. Uh, yes, we've got hate crimes, we've got cold case reviews, we've got celebrity witch hunts, as in against Cliff Richard. There's all sorts of things that they are doing um, that perhaps are pushing to the back of the queue, the real, real first job of a police force. And that is, if you ring up, as I had a constituent only just over a week ago, that she got burgled, an eight-year-old woman, nearly died last year in hospital, shopping for one of the first times she's got out, not gone far up the road, had a purse taken out of a bag, and um, it was caught on CCTV. The shop said, yes, we've got it. They contacted the police. I told her to contact the police herself, and they said they would send an officer to see her. She then waited all the following day, got nobody, and then a phone call saying, we can't, it's been closed down. I had to go to the police station myself and look, there is, say, there's, look, there's facial evidence on, on video here for you to actually look at. Will somebody please go and collect it and at least look at it? It's not so much the reassurance just to the lady, it's the fact that somebody's actually taking the time when there is actual evidence there to go and collect it and try and do something about it. So there is a whole plethora of points that have been raised tonight, so I'm not going to repeat them, but it's coming down to real local policing again, and as I say, if the mayor is going to engage with government in trying to get more funding for the police, it also perhaps would bring in the thing about other services that are putting onerous demand on the police surface as well, and therefore we might get some resolution to this problem. Uh, thank you very much. Councillor Greenhouse. 
I know, just when Councillor Peel has gone away, I was just going to clarify, just talk. I wasn't going to write him a letter. I was going to, going to just try and explain uh, the position. And, and I find myself actually agreeing a lot, uh, well, certainly with a lot of members in there. Sounds like Councillor Peel's arrived back now. I can clarify the position. <laughs> I hear Nick. Um, so, uh, but I find myself agreeing actually with a lot of what Councillor Wilkinson said, bizarrely enough, there, in, in that, um, you know, we can bander statistics around until we're blue in the face. But perhaps what is um, most apparent, and what we all accept, I think, as ward councillors, is that the perception of crime is on the increase. That's the key. People are starting, because of a lack of police presence in their communities, to feel unsafe. A lot of this is due to social media. I mean, you, the, tw you can, the press of a button, you can find out that somebody's had the car broken into. Often not broken into. Often they've left it unlocked. So much is opportunist, but it's still going on. There's unsavoury characters walking around, just trying handles, trying, not forcibly entering, but getting into properties uh, because through, through the fault of the owners, they've either left the window open or they've left the car door unlocked or whatever. But the perception of crime is rising and people in their communities, so we can all speak in our wards, are feeling more unsafe than they have done in a long time and therefore we need and the community and as elected members and as a police force need to be seen to be responding that to give back confidence to those communities but I also want to stress that and it was a point that I thought was made very ably by the first speaker on our side Councillor Wyatt who mentioned and I know you'll all have been expecting us to use the P word priorities in this but there have been decisions made some local constabularies made that decision to not release neighbourhood policing. We've all seen, we've all talked about it, the pressures that come on councils, as well councils tonight. We, on in our own council, are going through a digitalisation agenda, a huge agenda that will cut savings. You speak to many senior police officers. And they've said that, yes, the savings, they didn't welcome the savings. They were, you know, the cuts were, were horrific for them to manage. But it has enabled them to look at their processes, to look at the services they actually uh, give to the community, and to reassess the level of value for money that they're giving, just as we as councillors. And how many times do we sit and hear reports from this council that even now, after all these cuts, and praise to our staff for doing this, they are performing a better quality service due to reconfigurations that have started as a result of savings. Reports time after time begin with this, and the police themselves accept that it has given them the opportunity to look at the way they deliver their services and to look at their priorities. Now, neighbourhood policing has adversely been affected. There's no question about that, and we will support this motion, and we will move forward to hopefully get to a time where they can reassess. But Councillor Wilde's point was a very valid one. Durham is the prime example. They kept their neighbourhood policing. They decided to keep that and make their cuts. You know, GMP is, is encountering at the moment a multi-billion pound investment in a computer data sharing initiative. That's the decision they've made. We've heard from other councillors. We've different threats. Ten years ago, we'd never have dreamed that we had to have a separate unit in this town dealing with the organised fraud that has come in from certain areas of certain communities newly arrived in this town. That is a fact. We've had to react to that. That's not in any way making any adverse comment about any... It's a fact. We've had to deal with certain different challenges. The terrorist threat, human trafficking, issues that were never even really on the agenda. The huge emphasis now that the police put, and quite rightly so, on domestic violence. If you go to our courts now, the domestic violence cases way outweigh any time. I, I spoke to magistrates the other day. The last time they gave an ASBO out, they can't remember. It's different priorities that have been brought, different initiatives. It's gone at the wrong end. We have to have more visible policing. We accept that. But there have also to be a re-engagement with the priority decision-making at GMP level now. That's why I'm glad to see Andy Burnham held a big consultation exercise in the last few months, which were neighbourhood policing and where Thanks, I encourage everyone Sir in my... can you sum up now? I will sum up where I encourage everybody in my ward to take part in. Don't just complain on social media. Get the message across. We will support this motion. 
it will go to, uh, to collect more funding, which I hope will come back to neighbourhood policing. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Cox. Thank you very much, um, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I, I am going to... Just got to tell you. 
Kaz, Kaz the Walsh. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, uh, Co Councillor Peel is uh, without doubt uh, very eloquent and uh, very strong in his views. He presents, uh, in his views, a coherent argument. <laughs> Except he's totally misguided. <laughs> because he talked about uh, members on this side be, being politically motivated. Well, when I read this abstract tonight, I couldn't help but think it was the most politically motivated document I've read in many a long year, because there are five motions before this council, all calling for more funding. Not one of them addresses where that fund's gonna come from. Not one of them recognizes the austerity measures that have had to be implemented as a result of the uh, previous spending plans of a previous government. So the fact of the matter is, uh, Mr. Mayor, that when we have our motions such as, Madam Mayor, when we have, when, Madam Mayor, when we have motions such as this before us. 27B. Madam Mayor, okay. I, I accept. I disagree, but I accept. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, Madam Mayor, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, Madam Mayor, that uh, when we get motions of this nature, which seek to disguise the truth and the facts. Yeah. It does no good to the credibility of members or of this council yeah. as a body corporate. Yeah, yeah. Because it disguises the fact <laughs> that the police and crime commissioner, the mayor of Greater Manchester, had the power to raise additional funds and to redirect those funds into policing. He declined to do so. Presumably because he thought raising taxes would be unpopular with the electorate. By the same token, governments have to make hard decisions about where funding is expended. And you can't see five motions all seeking extra funding without recognizing, unless of course you welcome Brexit and the windfall that that will bring uh, to us uh, in uh, just a few months time. So the fact of the matter is, Mr. Mayor, we, we as elected members, Madam Mayor, we as elected members ought to be providing that leadership and showing to the public yet that yes, there are concerns, yes, there are issues, but not being alarmist as some members of this council have sought to do this evening. The fact is, if the Mayor of Greater Manchester requires help, yes, I would support that we write in his defence and support because clearly he needs it. And if that's the purpose of the motion, so be it, I will support it. Councillor Sheikh, do you wish to address us Please, there? Madam Mayor, yes. I never thought I'd get the chance. <laughs> I have an article, if you can hear me, please, yes. I have an article from the Commons in March 2011. David Cameron stated budget cuts won't affect frontline police members, numbers. He insisted there was no reason why there should be fewer frontline police. When asked the question whether there will be fewer frontline officers in the future, Mr. Cameron said, according to the Home Office statistics, if all forces achieve the current best average for the visibility and availability, that would increase the number of officers available. The question was re-asked, do you accept expect that there be fewer frontline officers in the years ahead, yes or no. Mr. Cameron stated there is no reason for there to be fewer frontline police officers. We're now in a position cuts are implemented. There is a lack of police visibility and availability and where we're seeing, we're seeing that a rise of burglary, car crime, and not to forget hate crime Residents are worried, feeling insecure and vulnerable. Many, many set, setting up their own residence patrol groups to combat crime. I'm sure some of our other councillors across the side have noticed that as well. Recent article in the national newspaper interviewed a resident from Bolton who said, who used to know all the local policemen in the old days, we see them walking up and down the pavement. It was reassuring and made them feel safe. We really should not be in this position. 
can you also have a little article here from the Independent recently. Police numbers have hit historical low. Recorded crime is rising faster than ever and more and more criminals are walking free. It just shows simply cannot trust the Tories to keep the community safe. I ask everyone to vote for this motion and show the people of Bolton that we're supporting them. Thank you. Councillor Thomas. Just really to clarify, um, the three things that Andy Burnham actually had at the election with regards to pre the, the police precept was that he would increase the number of police officers, which he's going to do, that he would maintain the existing number of PCSOs, in other words, he will not sack anyone, which he is, he is, in he is not going to do, and he would improve the 101 number. Those are the three things, his three things that he put forward in his ask for the 12, uh, 12 pound police precept. And I've just actually tweeted him to say that Bolton Tories want to ask the Mayor of Greater Manchester to raise the police precept higher than the £12 that he did at the last local elections if funding for the police is insufficient. So I'm sure he will be delighted tonight to know that you have carte blanche given him the opportunity. Because that is the one thing that he was worrying about, putting an extra burden on local council taxpayers. <coughs> But now he knows that you're behind him, I'm sure he will be ecstatic. <laughs> Councillor Waters. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Wow. I'll have to write motions more frequently. I did start off at the beginning with a long, long time ago. Well, it does seem a long, long time ago since I first said it. But the things that I was saying were factual and I've heard a lot of fairy tales tonight to the extreme and all I was asking for was a letter to be sent to ask for more funding and thank you thank you for supporting me although sometimes I do feel it's um, maybe a little bit half-hearted and it's for actually it's for our friend over here um, representing the Bolton News um, to say that you're all going to support my motion although I, I am very very grateful for that support councillor Kirk Robinson shameful asking council taxpayers yet again to fund more policing. Well, I'm sure your residents in West Horton North are not going to be very happy with that statement. But overall, some of the facts and figures that everybody was talking about, I think you might need to let Chris Green know about them, all these little facts and figures, because he seems to think it's all about red tape. So thank you for supporting my motion. It was an absolute pleasure. Oh, so we're going to take the named vote. Um, Abdullah? Yes. Adir? Yes. Ayub? Yes. Byrne? Yes. Chadwick? Yes. Cunliffe? Yes. Ravesh? Yes. Donaghy? Yes. Evans? Yes. Harkin? Yes. Howarth? Yes. Ibrahim? Yes. Iqbal? Yes. Ishmael? Yes. Kellett? Yes. Curran? McKeon, yes. Mystery, yes. Morris, yes. Murray, yes. Newall, yes. Peel, yes. Sylvester, yes. Shave, yes. Mrs. Thomas, yes. Waters, yes. Zaman, yes. Allen, yes. Baines, yes. Cox, yes. Critchley, yes. Mrs. Fairclough, yes. Galloway, yes. Greenhouse, yes. Haslam, yeah. Hewitt, yeah. Kirk Robinson, yeah. Morgan, yeah. Muslim, yeah. Parkinson, yeah. Radcliffe, yeah. Walsh, yeah. Warren, yeah. Christine Wilde, yeah. Paul Wilde, yeah. Cunningham, yeah. Gibbon, yeah. Hornby, yeah. Bagnall, yeah. Hayes, yeah. Wilkinson, yeah. Flitcroft, yeah. Patterson, yeah. Sanders. Yeah. I declare the motion carried. Uh, we are approaching 10.30, and given the nature and the amount of the remaining business on the agenda, 
I do not consider it re uh, reasonable or necessary to extend the me meeting tonight. So uh, all, of the <laughs> all of the remaining business will be carried forward to the next meeting. Thank you for your understanding and attendance. Thank you.